Hello, 580 Farbers. Uh, this is, uh, I'm a little early today on the recording. Uh, you can probably guess there are lots of meetings going on, and there's one for this afternoon during our class time. And that was me taking a drink. So I'm going to, I, I, I don't want you to think that I'm cutting short this particular presentation but what i want to do is to help you uh, kind of frame it uh so you can understand why it's in here um one of the things that i think that we are are realizing lately is the need to bring computer science into the classroom now, why don't you put it in here, Steve, with all this other full and stuff? I believe that I think it fits very nicely with this. And that, uh, that our learning solution it, it should have at least irresistibly engaging, eloquently efficient, uh, technologically ubiquitous, and steeped in real life problem solving. Can't get any further into real life problem solving than coding. What is coding? Well, it's kind of funny. Coding and programming are considered two different things. Programmers take a dim view of people who are coders, and coders take a dim view of people who are programmers. And I have always found that kind of funny. Why do I like the idea of kids learning to code? It has less to do with trying to turn out a bunch of little um, orange-fingered uh, Cheeto-eating um, kids than it is turning out people who can think, who can problem solve, who can understand that failure is a great teacher. And the beauty of when you code is that all of those come into play. In other words, you don't have to get the right answer right off the bat. You have a way of checking to see if what you have created works. And if it does work, then that gives you that immediate satisfaction of knowing that you've created something and then propels you on to try something else. There's a lot of math built into coding, which we won't go into because this is not a class on technology and math. But one of the things, again, that I like about it is how you can show kids that when you code something and you create a piece of code with a variable in it, you're basically creating a function. And functions serve as the basis of calculus and algebra two. So what you're trying to get kids to realize is there is connection between the math and real world. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you a couple of things that are in here. Uh, as you can guess, the Google has its own take on coding. And if you want, you can watch this little video right here that is their take on it. And then below, you can actually go in if you want and play in here. I will be quite frank with you in that I like this better. <laughs> I'm a big scratch guy. The reason why. Let me give you a couple of reasons why. I think scratch has a much simpler palette to work with beginning coders. I think the palette is color coded, so it's easier to work with. Um, and I like the fact that Scratch, the programming language, can be connected to um, a Lego creation called WeDo's that allows you to actually program something that the little robot that you have on the end of your USB will then uh, put into play. And I believe, and I haven't done this lately, but I believe the new Scratch version that we're going to play with today, uh, we'll do the same thing with the bigger NXT versions. Now, those of you who do not do any kind of robotics, that was just all gibberish, and I apologize. Um, I was part of a team that brought the robotics thing to Jefferson County too many years ago, and it's still part of me. I still enjoy it a lot. But let me show you what I'm going to ask you to do here. First of all, 
here's a, a video that basically takes you through how to do Scratch. Second of all, there's what you're making today. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to take these particular pieces and you're going to put them into a game that we're going to build here in just a minute. Now, let's make clear what we're about here. When you create this guy, which is the shark, if you want to make it, in other words, if you want to make this differently, but keep the coding here and just change up a few of the things that are in the coding, that's perfect. I don't want you just to copy and paste this in. Actually, you can't copy and paste it in. You'll have to read it, then go in and put it in. What I want you to do is I want you to try developing it the way that you would like to do it. Now, what I've also done is I've put in here a link to a PDF that you can print out and hold in your hand while you're looking at the, at the scratch in the MIT. And that way you can basically put all the information in and then go and build your little game. When you're finished, it will give you a link and you're going to put that link into the assignment. Let's get scratch. So this is scratch at MIT. Uh, if you want to do this with kids, this is the site I'd go to. There are other coding sites on the web. And the only reason why I pick Scratch uh, over the others is, first of all, it is a developing. Uh, they don't, they're always adding new features to it. Um, as you can see, there's a video right there. It tells you what the latest update is. It is very simple to use. Um, and the other thing about it is it's huge. It has so many uh, people using it. And the thing about it is that it is a hacker community. Now, hacker has a negative connotation to most people. But hackers really were people who developed code that they shared with everybody. That was the original definition of what hackers were. And the Scratch environment has embraced that completely. When we get into the Scratch um, desktop here in a second, I'll show you what I mean. But you can go up here and you can explore. You can look at what people have created out there. Look at that one. I got to look at this one. To toilet paper hoard. Let's see what that is. The year is 2020 and the world is at war. We're the most valuable resource. <laughs> Toilet paper. All right, let's see what happens if we click on this. So we're going to go shopping. Well, it's not doing much, is it? Oh, I see. Oh, okay. So I'm just gathering up all the toilet paper I can. All right. No, thank you. But you can see there's all kinds of stuff here. We are going to start here. So you go into Scratch, give yourself an account, just create an account. Um, and then when you get back in here, come to create. And we're going to start creating a project. Now, here's your layout. And I'll walk you around the layout so that you get a sense of what you're looking at. And I'm going to warn you that I'm going to have to be doing this a bit. See how the screen is shifting? Because my um, I've got my screen uh, resolution reduced so that it's nice and big so you can see what I'm doing here. But over here on the right hand, left hand side, excuse me, over here on the left hand side, this is your code. Scratch is what's called OOPS programming, O-O-P-S. It stands for Object Oriented Programming System. And what it means is these little things over here, these little snippets of code, then act upon the sprite that is over here. This is the mascot for Scratch, Scratch the Cat. Uh, we're not going to use him, and I'll show you how to replace him here in just a second. So 
you can build your program in here and then what you create works over here simple as that and then when you're done you can take the code out and put it away now i'm going to go up here to where it says untitled 26 and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put in my game title okay and that's just so i can have it as you can see over here here's all the different languages you can program in my goodness gracious here is a file for you to be able to save it to your computer um, you don't need to worry though it does the same thing that everything we've played with has has the ability to do and that is it saves automatically um, you can turn on tur turbo mode which means things go really fast don't do it um, if you make a total screw up everything you can do a restore and it'll take you back to where your last one was here are the tutorials um, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of tutorials if you need to do a getting started you feel free to do that although the one I put into the video works really well as well this is sharing this is how we're going to get it out and put it into wherever we want to put it okay so we will do that there's your link right there all you do is comment click on that and then you can share it it will give you the uh, link to it and you have to the races being able to put it in um, your assignments page this is your project page which is what you're looking at right now this is um, a folder where you can put things in and then there's you down here where it says backpack the cool thing about being in the scratch community is if because it's a hacker based community and again I cannot emphasize enough that, that is not a pejorative that's not a negative in the hacker based community when you go out and look at other people's work if you see stuff in there that you think is really cool you can take code and put it into your backpack so that if you want to then use that code into your program you can just like that just drag it out of the backpack and drop it in now I have that code available to me to use in my project one of the things uh, when I was learning Java the Java teacher taught me was he said don't recreate find in other words he would there's a whole community out there that does nothing but Java stuff and so he was saying, you don't have to go out there and create new code. Use the code that people have already worked out because you have an understanding of what the language is about now. So you can look at code and you can say, yeah, I need this. And you can put it in and then you can change up the variables, do whatever you want to do, which is what you're going to do today. In other words, I'm giving you the code to put here. And all I'm asking you to do is to change up the variables. Uh, if you want to use, let's see, we have one, two, I believe three, four different uh, characters in this. If you want to make it with just two, that's fine. If you want to do a variation on it um, and make it a frogger game, and a shark attack game, in other words, well, I'll show you in a minute, then you're more than welcome to do that. If this makes you extremely nervous, um, and you're not sure what you're doing, then just play with some of these variables in here. See where it says like move 20 steps? Try making that 30, try making that 10, try making that five. Change up some of these variables and see how your game works and see if it, okay? That's all I'm asking you to do. So let's get started. First thing we have to do is we have to define our workspace actually our studio space excuse me so as I said you'll notice there's a little kitty up here and that's called scratch scratch is located down here in the work area and I can't get any bigger I don't think yeah I can yay so scratch is located down here now the reason why it's located down here is so that you can see all the different pieces routines that you have in your program now, we don't need scratch because we're going to be doing it with something else so I'm going to go ahead and click on the garbage can next to him and poof he's gone 
No problem. I can go over here and I can find a different sprite. That's what they're called that I can put in here. And you can see there's all kinds of categories. Now, this is where you should be looking right now and thinking about, hmm, so my shark is my boss, for those of you who are gamers. He is the thing that I'm either trying to defeat or trying to avoid. So I could make him in out of anything. I could make my boss a dragon. I could make him a centaur. Anything I want to do, I just basically go up here and decide which one I want. Now, the reason why I like the shark one, and I'll show you in just a second, he's essentially a, a GIF, an animated GIF. And so as I mouse over him, you can see that he actually moves and his mouth opens and closes. So in other words, there's, a, there's an animation built into this one. That's why I like it. Uh, if you pass your mouse over the various different sprites, if they are animated, you'll see the animation. So you'll know what they do when you put them into your game. The puppy basically gets up and sits down and does all that. Starfish wiggles his arms. Pufferfish kind of puffs. <laughs> the penguin kind of moves around. You get the idea. So you can go through and you can pick out your sprite that will be the boss or the character that will be doing the thing we either have to avoid. Okay, so I'm going to pick him. And now there he is on my screen. Notice that this is the area that you're working within, okay? It's not going to get any bigger. So the problem you'll run into right away is that your characters can be a little bit big or a little bit small. And so what you can do is you can make them bigger or smaller depending upon what you want them to be. So right now, as you can see, we're size. My, my character is 100%. Let's see if we dropped him down to fifth cent. A little bit better in terms of his size. Or if I wanted to, I could make him 75%. You get the idea. Okay. Now, I need a background. So I'll come over here to where the backgrounds are. And I will do outdoors. And I will come down to underwater. Now, you know, again, I've done this a lot, so I kind of know where everything is. Take your time. Find what you like. There's my underwater. So now you get the idea. So I've got a shark that is living within this underwater area. Now I want to be able to do something with him. This is where all of this comes into play over here. You'll notice that everything is color coded. And if you weren't a uh, colorblind like I am, now you're like, whoa, boy, this is great. I have no problem being able to move things around and see. <clears throat> I have to rely upon my memory. <laughs> so when we go to create something, when we're working with any of the sprites, now remember, the sprites are going to show up down here in this tray. And so when I want to work on that sprite, I have to click on that sprite. So right now I've clicked on the shark sprite. So I am going to work on his code. So the first thing I want to do is I want to drag in when the flag is clicked. There's the flag. So this is how I get my game going. Then I'm going to start building in the pieces that are going to define my shark. Well, one of the first pieces I want to put in here is a variable that um, I have created down here. And I'm going to just drag that over. And I'm going to add a new variable. And I'm going to call it eaten. OK. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is we do it, what it's doing, what it's doing is it's allowing me to decide what I want my variable to be tied to. It's not like it's smart enough to understand what it's doing. It's just giving it a label, 
okay? And so I'll say Eaton. And as you can see now, set Eaton to zero, which means my shark, when he starts off, he hasn't eaten anything. So we're going to set his score, if you will, to zero. Simple as that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click that into place because that is going to be always a constant that goes on uh, within the game. But now I want to decide and code how my guy moves around. So I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to look for how to move him around, which is under motion. You can probably guess that. Or control. Sometimes I get those mixed up, but that's okay. So here's where my first thing is. I want to be able to point toward the mouse pointer. In other words, he's going to follow my mouse around. Now, notice as I'm working out here, at this point, I'm not connecting these two together like you see in the, uh, in the code that I've already given to you. I always make it a point of when I'm working with pieces that I put them out on the, on the screen so that I can work upon them before then I connect it all together. So first song we're doing is we're teaching it that we want him to follow the mouse pointer. We need him then as he follows the mouse pointer to move a certain amount of steps. Again, no big deal. So we're gonna bring in moving 10 steps. Now you can probably guess that if we left it at 10, he's not gonna move very fast. Let's leave it. I know it says here on, on the uh, form that it's 20. Hmm, let's leave it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to find something where if he gets to the edge, he bounces back into the screen. Simple as that. And then this one's a little tricky, but what it's basically doing is it is allowing you to have him go to his next um, costume. In other words, I told you he's an animated GIF, and so therefore he has multiple, uh, you want to say, flip book pieces behind him. And so what we want to do is we want one of those flip book pages to change as he moves around on the screen. Simple as that. So let's go down here and find next costume which i'm having trouble finding. this is the hardest part of this is i find when i haven't done it in a while that i have to go and scroll up and down looking for things so if you're already out there yelling at me steve it's up there i apologize but i hope you're getting the idea here that all we're doing is we're finding the pieces and we're putting them together as simple as that. There it is. Next costume. So I'm going to put my next costume in underneath edge on edge bounce. And then I'm going to wait. Why wait? Why are we waiting? Because what you're doing here is, is you want this to loop over and over again. But you don't want it to... Uh, on, on the uh, costume change, you want it to not wait too long before the next costume change. Otherwise, it just kind of looks like tink, 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 and it doesn't know, it, it doesn't change very quickly and smoothly. Uh, conversely, if you change it uh, to where it's really short, then he's like, nang, 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 as he's running around on the screen. Boy, once you show that to kids, they, they're like, got it. So it's under control. Come down here. Wait one second. All right. Let's put all this together. So I'm going to slide all this up and click here. Okay. Let's see what happens if we click on the flag now. I'm just clicking, by the way. Click, click, click. 
I'm going to keep clicking till he gets up here to an edge, and I'll show you what happens. There, see, he flipped over. And now he's click, click, he's moving again. You get the idea. All right. Well, that's really exciting, Steve. Well, the first thing, <laughs> the first thing you want to do is you want to think about how can I make this so it just it happens. I'm going to drag that back down, the code. And now we're going to look at control. So if we tell this piece of code to keep doing what it's doing forever, then what happens is the action that we just had to keep going, click, 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 and do, it will now do forever. So I'll slide that back up in here. And as you can see, when the flag is clicked, the first thing it's going to do is set the Eaton score to zero. And then it's going to forever cause these things to happen. So let's see what happens now when I click on it. And when I move my mouse around on the screen, as you can see, he's trying to follow it. Not going very quick, is it? Why is that? This is where you start teaching kids to problem solve. So maybe I need to move him faster. Let's see what happens if I'm moving 20 steps. I come back in here, stop. And then I'm going to hit the flag again. And now I'm going to move him in. And as you can see, he's moving around a little bit better. But his mouth action is a little bit slow. So he's following my mouse, not very quickly. Let's go back up here to where the steps were. Let's make it 30. Oh, goodness, don't make it 2,000. Let's make it 30. Okay. Stop. Flag. Now it's moving. And as you can see, he's starting to move with a little bit better. And he's following my mouse. And he's starting to move around the screen a little bit better. Now, remember that weight thing we talked about? Stop. Let's go in and change that up, because right now it's sitting at one second. Let's see what happens if we make it 0.5 seconds. Flag. And now we're doing a pretty good job of him moving around on the screen with his little jaws working. And when he gets over to the edge, he bounces his back into the playing field. Still don't like that. So how about if I make it 0.1? And all of a sudden, when it's zero, goodness gracious, this is the one, <laughs> this is the, one the kids love because he's, nah, 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 nah. he's running all over the screen. And as you can see, it follows my mouse really well. But let's go back over here and let's try a different version of that. Let's do point one. Stop. Play. Okay. Now we're getting something interesting going on here. Now we have the to move him around on the screen with him chomping away with the different looks. Stop. So at this point in the assignment, what you can do at this point is three things. Number one, you can decide if you want to use that particular sprite or if you want to find another one. And I'll show you how easy that is. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my, I'm going to go in and I'm going to find a different Sprite. Let's find something maybe a little cooler. The dragon looks neat. What do you think about the dragon? Let's put the dragon in. What the heck? So here we go. We now have a dragon. Well, I don't think the dragon would be under the sea. So let's go find a background for him. Oh, look, there's a fantasy one. Oh, there's Castle 4, so on. Now let's, let's put the woods in. So we now have a dragon. And we don't like that size of him, so let's make him 50%. Now we have a dragon. What do I do over here? Well, I basically take all the things that I just did, and I put them back into play. Simple as that. And I can rebuild my character and give him everything I just did with my shark. Remember, you always start with the 
uh, clicking the flag. And since you've already defined it once, there's your Eaton. Set your Eaton. <laughs> and so now I can come up here and um, let's see. Our other code was we're working out here now. We wanted to point towards our mouse pointer. So we're going to go find that and bring that in to our screen. We're going to move 20 steps. I'm going to bring that into the screen. We're going to, on edge, bounce back. Put that into the screen. And then, next, we're going to have the next costume, which, again, I have forgotten where it was, but it was right here, I think. And the next costume could be interesting because... I'm not sure what he's going to do when he has uh, the next costume. It looked like he kind of was moving, but I'm not sure. So let's go and, and see. I'm sorry. This is the part that drives me crazy, too, is the fact that I have to scroll around and look for stuff that I ought to just be able to find right away. And you're sitting out there, like I said, and you're yelling at me. Steve, it's right there. Okay, so there's next costume. And then we're going to add the little weight thing. Remember the weight thing? And what is the weight thing for? The weight thing is to flip between the different costumes. That's all. That's all it's for. And I think it's up here under move. Under motion. You could put in, after I got done with this, if I wanted to, I could put in a damsel. In other words, the, the, the game is you're trying to avoid the dragon and get somewhere. Um, the fish one, what you're trying to do is the reverse of that, is you're trying to get your fishies, or you're trying to get your shark to eat as many fishies as he can. Um, there's all kinds of ways you can do it. You could make the shark the thing you avoid, and then you move your fish around. And you now have the tools to do that. Because now what you can do is just leave your shark running, and you wouldn't put the mouse pointer on him. You could just let him run around in the, uh, in the show, and then you try to move the fish to avoid him. We'll do that in just a second here. I'm sorry. I'm having so much trouble finding this weight. Where are you, weight? I haven't even touched sound. We'll look at sound here in just a second. Oh, you can also change his size up and down, which is kind of crazy as well. All right, so there's our next costume. And hmm. I'm having a brain fart, and I apologize, everybody, that I can't get my weight in here. Let's go ahead and, and put in what we do know where it is. Let's put in our control here. And that control was our forever. So we'll go ahead and we'll bring that in and let it chomp on top of this. Okay. So you basically just have all of your pieces here. If it gets a little disconnected like mine's doing right now, just pull the pieces out and then put them back in. Make sure you put them back in in an order. Don't just, you know, arbitrarily throw them in. There we go. And I'm going to drag it up here. Well, come on, stay in there. I'm going to drag this up here and connect it. All right, just for giggles, let's see what happens if we play this. <laughs> Okay, so we know we've got some things to do. Wow. 
That is one hyperactive little dragon. Okay. Are you getting the idea? Now, how can I switch it up? All right, let's, let's do that real fast. So we could have our dragon or our... our shark, we could put him as a object to avoid. In other words, he would just be moving in one path back and forth across the screen like this. And then we could put in our little fishies. And our fishies then, the idea would be that they would be, they would swim around and avoid him to try to get him across. And you know what that is. That's a game that you played as a kid called Frogger. So if I put my shark in here and I can change his size down to 50% and then I can go over and I can define him. And now you know how to do that. You can define him so that he just basically does this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Now adding other sprites into the equation, you just go in here and you click and you find different kinds of the fishies like we have in here. So there are all these different kinds of fish, by the way. So I can put that kind of clownfish in. I can go up here and I can do the same thing and find another kind of fish to put in or put in another fish, excuse me. Remember, I'll have to change them up a little bit but you get the idea. You're just going in, you're adding the creations, and then you're changing, you're putting the code in, and you're playing with the code to make it do things. That's all you're doing. So we would make these guys a little bit smaller. Um, we could have them up here. And then the trick would be that you would have to bring them down past your shark that's going back and forth and then maybe get them to a little home down here. I'm not saying you have to do this, okay? If all you want to do is follow the code that's out here on the screen, that is fine. Let me just show you one thing. Let's, let's just do one thing if you might like to play with it. Uh, this was something that the kids loved playing with. So I'm going to grab my shark. Remember to do that, by the way. And I'm going to, now that I've got sort of an idea how things work, I can just start pulling in pieces as I know where they are. So I know I'm going to need to um, go to a mouse pointer. I know I'm going to need um, to move. Uh, let's see. And then the other pieces I need are, if on the edge, bounce. Okay. And we're going to do next costume. Oh, here we go again. Now I got to go find the, the stupid weight. Wait. Oh no, I don't want to do that wait. That wait is for if, if something you're waiting for something to happen or if something does happen, you can there it was right up here at the top of control. Jeez a wee, Steve. Okay, let's find next costume. Which ought to be right in up here. No. right there okay now let me show you what I'm talking about I'm going to remove this piece of the code okay so I'm just going to slide it away from it 
and I'm going to move it off of the screen. Now, what am I doing? Is I'm basically going to create a way for this guy just to be moving back and forth, back and forth on the screen, acting as the boss. Okay. So to do that, I want him to move in this one area forever. Well, I'm going to get this out here because I need that when the flag gets clicked. And then I'm going to bring in my forevers. And I'm going to line them up and drop it down. And I'm going to put it up here and click on it. So let's see what happens now with our little fishy, our little sharky, when I do that. Well, as you can see, he's moving awfully slow, but he's moving on his own. Stop. Let's have him move at 30. Go. And now he's moving a little bit faster. And that mouth opening and closing slowly like that. I don't know about you, but I think it's kind of cool. So now he flips and he's coming back. This is how you build Frogger. So there's the thing you're supposed to avoid. And then you would bring down your little fishies. And if you read the code, it will tell you the fact you can just use the code that's for the fishies. You don't really need to change all that much. That if the frog or if the shark touches them, they disappear off the screen. But what would happen if we were, if you wanted to add some sound to it, what could that be like? Well, let's go down here, click on our shark. There's our, and let's go up here and play with adding some sound to it. We could play a sound like water drop. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go see what our other choices might be. Water drop bite. Well, well, well. Okay. <laughs> I hope you can hear that. <laughs> now I'll show you the one the kids love the most. Play sound, and you come in here, and you can record. Got to allow for microphone use. Dun 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 dun. Save it. And I I can call it recording. I'll just call it Jaws. We'll see what it sounds like. Cool, huh? That is, you do that with you show that to kids and you're just about done for the day. <laughs> so let's see. Play sounds. Jaws. Let's play it now. Okay. Hit the idea. All right. Now, when this is all said and done, what do we do? So we're going to, uh, oh, this is the other thing I wanted to show you before we get away. When you go in and look at other people's stuff, you can go in and you can go to their uh, project page. This is what your page would look like when it gets done. And then if you wanted to see what their code looked like, you would go here and you go to see inside. And if this code is something that you could use in one of your creations, you can come up here and you can grab it and drag it down and put it into your backpack. And now you have that code that whatever that person um, had created is now a part of your backpack for you to use in your other creations. That is pretty cool. Go save it just to make sure that I'm good. I'm now going to go to my project page. And there's your link. So you take that link, you take that link, and you put that into the assignments page. 
and to do your finished. All right, let me make sure it works. So I'll go up here and I'm just going to put it into my There it is. Now he's not moving uh, because there he went. Okay. So <laughs> the sound is causing him not to move. Oh dear, what do I do, students? Maybe I need to come back in here and let's try another sound and see if it works better. That one works better. That's the best part of all of this. It's getting kids to realize that failure is a teacher. That is not the end of the world. Okay. So that's our little scratch game creation. Uh, you will do better at me than me at this because you can see all the colors. Um, and you'll be able to get this done in no time flat. Again, there's where it is. So you can just print that out so you can have it in your hand so you can go through and do it. Or if you just want to open a new tab and then come back in here and look. Remember, remember, all you're doing is, is you are creating the boss, the shark, the dragon, whatever. You can make the octopus, you know, the, the bad guy if you want to. Then all you're doing is you're putting in your other people here. And these can be other things. They can be starfish. They can be other animals. Change things up. Play with it. Move things around. Have fun. Um, it's very addicting. It's very addicting. Next week will be our last module. Can you believe that? So next week is our last module. What we'll be looking at next week is another programming um, app that's available on the web. And this one, I'll show you it. This one I'm much better at. I'm pretty good at Scratch, too, once I remember where everything is. AR and VR, we're going where no teacher's gone before. We, can't, we can do the VR piece, uh, and I'll show you how to do it. You can do the AR piece too if you will put the CoSpaces app on a phone. Now, for our purposes, we're going to be using the CoSpaces um, where you basically are going to be on a computer looking at it. The beauty of it is that if you have um, a pair of the goggles and you put them on, um, and then you, you're doing this through your phone, by the way. You're putting your phone into the CoSpaces app. You find the CoSpaces uh, creation that you made. You turn it on. You have your goggles on. You can actually walk around and look around and see everything that you made in that VR space. There are tons of lesson plans for this thing. If I had a one-to-one -one classroom, but do you be better believe I'd be taking a good long look at this because there is some really good stuff here that I could create. One of the things that I've seen people do with this is they go into um, using it as a way of kids doing demonstrations. So in other words, they'll make pavilions, they'll make um, signs, and they'll show different things. They'll take you through a historical museum that they have created. Uh, I've seen where kids, and that's the assignment I think that you, I'm asking you to do, is to develop what your vision of a world uh, would look like it, through the lens of your area of contact, a uh, content, excuse me. Um, this is, if you want to go in and look at the lesson plans and find one that you could use, I don't have a problem with that. You don't have a problem with that at all. Okay. So I think you'll find that it's a very easy tool to use. It's very addictive, very much like the Scratch. When we get done with that module, we're done. And we'll go over the, the hat. And then you should be all set to finish up and get everything turned in. As always, if you're having problems, 
If you need to sit down with me, I was with a student today who is demonstrating their uh, Google Classroom to me via CoLab because they're inside of a domain and you can't, I can't get to it. Um, they, we came into this environment and they showed me uh, their wonderful work. It was very impressive work. If you want to show me that because you're a JCPS school and you can't let me into your Google Classroom, you just want to show me what it looks like, we can use the CoLab environment to do that. Uh, otherwise, if you're not in a domain, and you just are creating it, just put the code in to make sure I can get to it. By the way, everybody who's turned one in so far, I have seen your code, I have been able to get into your classroom, so you're fine. As always, if you need to talk with me, 502-457-2937, and next week we will go where no teacher has gone before.